It's Natasha Renault with you on BFBS The Forces Station and today we're chatting about Masters of the Air which is a new nine episode limited series about the men of the US Air Force's 100th Bomb Group who in World War II risked their lives to fly five miles above the ground and behind enemy lines to conduct perilous bombing raids over Nazi Germany. You might be the last pretty face I ever see. Gary Goetzman is one of the executive producers alongside Tom Hanks and Steven Spielberg and explains why they wanted to tell this story. Steven uh, Spielberg had always, after Band of Brothers, wanted to respect his father's wish because his father said, when are you going to do the pilots? When are you going to do the Air Force? When are you going to do the war in Europe? And um, it took a while and we did find a book that we felt that would be great for us to uh, try to develop. And that's what we did. Um, really instigated mostly by Stephen. And we, we loved these stories, Tom Hanks and I, but uh, Stephen kind of pushed us towards this particular story. And here we are. Band of Brothers is a force's favorite. So many of the troops love it. And I'm sure the pilots are going to love Masters of the Air, but do the time frames overlap? Oh, yeah. They all overlap. Uh, when Band of Brothers landed uh, in Europe, it had been this uh, Army Air Corps who tenderized the land before they got there. So it was very helpful that when this Air Force came over in 19... 1943 that uh, they were successful. So how do you research something like this and choose whose stories you want to tell? Because these were real people. That's what makes it so uh, so satisfying is that you're choosing from real stories. Yes. And um, uh, we, we don't have to make anything up. We just have to figure out how to tell a very broad story obviously in a more condensed way. What do you hope people will take away from it? I hope they uh, see this story and realize there's a lot of things happening in our world today that maybe with a little understanding and a little uh, comprehension of what happened before, which can be pretty similar at times, um, we can do a little better than we're doing in our current climate. And just... Finally, you've managed to get an incredible cast lineup for this and you put them all through boot camp. What was that like? What a cast, right? <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. And they're all becoming movie stars right before our very eyes. And they're the sweetest guys and so humble and so wonderful because they went through boot camp. Boot camp <laughs> <laughs> made them know. So um, they, uh, Yes, the, we uh, on Band of Brothers, and then we did it on Pacific. Uh, the actors, uh, once they get hired, are immediately like, when, do, when are we doing boot camp? It's, they seem to be very excited about doing it. And Captain Dale Dye is our uh, instructor and uh, military advisor throughout our show. And they like, they like getting uh, yelled at by him. So it's, uh, it's something they just always want to do. The show has a star-studded lineup, and the cars were put through boot camp by Captain Dale Dye, who is a decorated Marine veteran of the Vietnam War. He's now an advisor on films and TV shows and worked with the cast, including Austin Butler and Callum Turner, to prepare for their roles in Masters of the Air. First of all, I was maybe the most starstruck I've ever been by Captain Dale Dye. <laughs> Because since I was a kid, I'd watched the behind the scenes on Platoon or Saving Private Ryan or any of these films, and Dale Dye was always the the guy that that right. you know took all the actors to boot camp, and so and was in a way sort of the inspiration for Tropic Thunder, you know, and and uh, so I I was very starstruck by Dale Dye. That's amazing. And uh, the BTS stuff. Yeah, the BTS. Wow, I've never seen that. And yeah, we got you got to watch like the Saving Private Ryan one is amazing. For us, it was it was educating us on that time period. There was there was a portion where we were sort of in a classroom all together. Mm -hmm. It was, um, I mean, it was, it was really from the ground up. It was how to march, how to salute, how 
how to uh, you know work an aircraft so so we had part of that was our time in the cockpit learning every switch and knob and um, how to take off and all the protocols and everything. It was the physical, you know, we, we went on some runs and, and What was did that? We did that push up. When was that push up again? What do they call it? Where each each of us had our feet on the guy's shoulders behind us and we did a push up all together. Like a hundred people. Yeah. The one ton push up, was it called? Cool? Yeah, the one ton push up. One ton push up. It was about, there was this thing called crew glue. Yeah. And, and yeah. Uh, that was the thing that we were building and all the things Austin said. But we were building this bond. And this unity and um, this togetherness that, that we would then use to propel ourselves through the next 10 months. Mm. And Callum, what did you think of the flight simulators? Because we've done it at BFBS and it's very realistic and a little bit scary. Yeah, it's incredible. I mean, it's a gift as an actor because you're seeing everything happen around you. You're also on a gimbal 50 foot up in the air, which is... You know, if you're going down, it goes like that. If, if flat hits, it shakes. So you don't even have to think about uh, playing something. It just happens. And you're just trying to stay as cool as possible. Mm -hmm. I loved it in there. It, it, the only difficult thing about it was that because it was so difficult to get up, get the gimbal down for you to get up, uh, we'd be in there for like six hours, mm -hmm. seven hours at a time, which was a bit of a slog. In the summertime, that got really hot. You're in your, <laughs> yeah. your shearling jacket. <laughs> And you're, you're 50 feet in the air, and, yeah, and, and the heat rises, and it gets very hot in there. And there's screens, you know, 360 yeah. uh, um, sphere of screens around you, so it's like... Yeah, so all the lights are really hot yeah. as well. And I, I felt like I got jet lag in there a little bit, you know? Yeah, it's wild. It was like we're on a long haul flight. Yeah, yeah. With no movies to watch. Yeah, you could see people start to panic. But the characters you play, they were real people. So what acts of Buck and Bucky's real-life heroism impacted you the most? You know, I, I think we, we were just touching on this, the fact that both of them joined mm. before Pearl Harbor. Um, so they weren't, the, you know, they, they weren't forced into the military at all. They, they, they were the type of, of people who who really were were focused on on what was right and what was good and and um, protecting their country and protecting protecting values in the world and um, and and they were they were strong mm. you know honorable men so I, I I feel privileged that we got to bring their story to life and they were the best pilots too yeah yeah they were they, that's you know, true until uh, Rosenthal I think they were seen yeah. as the best pilots in, in the Air Corps. And yeah, so all the, yeah. uh, everybody looked up to them and, and uh, they really set a standard. Absolutely. The series is based on a book by Donald L. Miller, but these young men of the US Air Force were real people. And this is a true story of those who risked their lives for our future. Barry Keon plays Lieutenant Curtis Biddick and Rafferty Law, Sergeant Ken Lemons in Masters of the Air. It's massive appreciation for these lads. Um, you know, you're, you're, um, you're carrying such a story and, and you want to tell it right um, with respect. And, um, so there's massive weight on that. But it was just the kind of um, the mentality that they had, you know, being so young and you know, having friends and, and, and you know, seeing them and, and, and not come back and, you know, um, the, the loss, everything and just the kind of the the the, the toughness that, that was required to kind of, you know, keep keep going on through it and, and you know, stay committed to the mission. Um, there was a lot of that um, that I realised and, and, and appreciated. And Raf, this was all filmed at Dalton Barracks. So what was that like working at a former RAF airfield? And did you get to chat to any of the soldiers from 4 Regiment RLC who are now working there? I spent a lot of time um, at Phil Abbott's, uh, uh, um, at the Dalston um, in, in Abingdon. And that airfield was, I mean, just the scale of it itself. And when, when, when the sets were built on there, it, it just felt so real. And it was, it was such a kind of, incredible experience first to see it and like understand like okay this is my hard stand this is where like this is where I'm in charge um it became it felt like home and and I remember kind of coming in coming in, in the mornings and seeing some of the some of the guys marching um around the RAF um area but I didn't actually get a chance to ever speak to them it would have been it would have been really cool to though yeah and Barry, you're a pilot in the series, so did you get much hands-on time with real aircraft? Yeah, I mean, there were 
they were replicas. They were like to the point, mm -hmm. um, you know. And Captain Dale Doy would be there, and we'd have we'd have any any questions that we had, any switches, any buttons, and we had to know this by second nature at, at this point. Um, but there was a lot in the cockpit that I had to be familiar with um, and make look, you know, as if it's uh, again second nature to me. Um, but you understand the the, the intensity of there and the, and, and the how how minimal everything is and no know, space, no absolutely. space, and mm -hmm. you know you gotta everything is you know quick and it's uh, you really do grow a massive kind of appreciation for these massive pieces of metal in the air and. You know, it baffles you how they how they got up there and and and, and stayed up there, and like stayed the, the up kind there, of yeah. the mm. what they could could with withstand in the air and mm. how some of them for me like seeing some of the missions come back and they we they built these incredible B seventeen planes like Barry said literally like for like, mm -hmm. but then sometimes they'd come and they'd be pretty shot up and half a wing's fallen off or they and, still it's made like, it back. and they still made it back. I mean, it was incredible. There was a reason it was called a flying fortress because. Yeah. It was it was hard it was hard to shoot them down. It's beautiful to see these aircraft in the program, but what do you both love about the men that you portray in the series? Because they are real people. You know, and again, you you got to pay massive respect to that. Um, but you know, it's, it was to bring a bit of humour and a bit of um, you know um, just a bit of kind of a charm to it as well. And and then when it's time to go, it's it's turning that that mentality on. Um, it was that contrast of. You know, being the messer, but also being the being 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 the person who could really switch it on, and and you got a mission to do. There, but, um, there was the, like I think we all felt a, a level of responsibility playing these real people, um, and there there are there are relatives to a lot of them who are around alive today. I was lucky enough to be able to speak to to Lemons' his family and have their support and stories, which kind of gave me a lot of belief and also a lot of help, kind of like putting him together. Um, I just really wanted to kind of, he, he comes across as such an inspiring, like lovely, hardworking guy. And, and that's what I really wanted to show. I think it was a great opportunity to be able to, to show the mechanic's point of view. And mm -hmm. someone like Ken Lemons, who just like kind of never said no and was there for everybody. And he was a real team player. And I like to think of myself as a team player. So I kind of wanted to, to, be, to bring that to the group. A real responsibility comes with portraying real people. And the cast got to meet some of the families of the men who served with the US Air Force's 100th Bomb Group. Anthony Boyle portrays Major Harry Crosby, and Nate Mann plays Major Robert Rosenthal. What astonished me about getting to play him was, was like kind of his warrior spirit and his courage and also his warmth and his generosity. I think he wasn't only astonishingly brave, but also a wonderful leader and took care of the people around him. And that ends up being such a big part of our show. Um, so it, it was, it was a it, it was a great person to step into every day. Yeah, you can definitely see the warmth of the characters as the series goes on. And Anthony, your character we see navigating for the Air Force's hundredth bomb group, and it looks really stressful, particularly you know when you're navigating through that cloud cover. But if you were in that situation and given the choice, Anthony. Would you be a navigator or a pilot? Oh God, um, I think I would sit at home I, I, if, if, I was, <laughs> if I was given the choice, to be honest. But um, yeah, that navigator job is, I think, one of the hardest jobs in the plane. Because the, the pilots, you, you would fly to where you had to fly and then the battles would only last, you know, two, three minutes. But the navigator had to be on for eight, nine hours every single flight. So that job seems a lot more stressful. It's probably the easier, easier job, I would say, the pilot. And I have to say, there's some very funny moments with you trying to navigate. I won't give yeah. too much away, but uh, you did make me feel a little bit sick at one point. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think that's going to be a common theme with people that watch it. I met uh, Crosby's family recently and I said to them, don't worry, he is a hero in the end. Just stick with it. Stick <laughs> with the story. I was actually going to say about that because it must have been wonderful to to chat to these families. I mean, Anthony, did you get to meet anybody? Yeah, it was incredible. I, I didn't want to meet any of them before we started filming because I didn't want it to sort of make me make a choice about the person I'm trying to play. I wanted it to be something that we were creating entirely. But I met Crosby's sons and daughters the other night at the premiere. And one of them said to me, he said, before we came here, we were told not to think you're gonna see your dad back. But they said, I feel like we've got, we've got dad back after watching it on screen. So it was like, a, it was a great full circle moment, you know? 
really, really, really beautiful. I met Rosie's son uh, and grandson, actually. Um, you know, uh, Dan Rosenthal, Rosie's son, is, is pretty involved in the 100th Bomb Group um, and uh, obviously really loved his father and, you know, told me just some stories about him that, that I, I, I wouldn't have found otherwise. Um, I mean, they were so wonderful to meet. I mean, I imagine it's very strange meeting someone who's going to portray one of your family and your father, um, but to have their blessing was, was important to me. And just finally, for both of you, what will you take away from having been involved in this series? I think for me, what was so what was so uh, inspiring was just the, the 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 level of detail we went into on this project and how and how immersive it was as an, as an experience. Um, you know, for an actor, it's that's just so satisfying mm. and something that that I, I, I hope to carry with me uh, uh, forever. I think for me, just the sacrifice that these men made. Just that every day that they, you go forward, you remember that they fought and died for our freedom. And we played some of the lucky ones that came back, but, but, but a lot of people didn't. So just, just to keep that with you is always a good thing, you know? Yeah.